Good evening. We're here together to talk about stem cells. I'm with Regenerative Solutions of Oklahoma, and, and today's presentation we hope will be quite informative. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. We choose to do it not because it's easy, but because it's hard. Our vision is within a decade, the trajectory of health will change. Medicine is moving at such a fast pace right now. Everything in medicine that we know now is gonna change. Surgery, pharmaceuticals, well now we're in the age of cells. Cells will represent to doctors a much safer and more effective and sustainable way to treat all diseases that involve degeneration of tissue. So that's just about everything. Exosomes will be very important in regenerative medicine because very similar to stem cells, they regenerate. You know, they like to fix things. That's what they do. They signal your tissues in your body to heal thyself. Pope Benedict was very smart and he really embraced science and how we can improve human health. The grand vision is to use cell therapy, stem cells, immuno-oncology using other cells of our immune system, natural killer cells, T cells, and then gene therapy. What interested you about stem cells? Oh, the technology is incredible. 15 years ago, I would have said, this is science fiction stuff, and it's with us right now. In vitro fertilization was considered a wacky idea. Now it's something that we use every day and we take it for granted. Soon we'll see the same thing with stem cell therapies. It's a giant shift in thinking in the concept of being a physician and a healer. And you can never just go back and say, I'm gonna go back to my old life, I'll do surgeries, I'll write prescriptions. I can never do that again. I've already seen the other side. Five years from now, majority of illnesses will be treated by stem cell and any medical doctor coming out of any medical school must learn stem cell, otherwise they'll be left behind, period. We are a part of creating history. We're in part of creating history. That's what brings us here tonight. One of the things that Dr. Chai and I both have visions of and incorporated Dr. Tate together with us is being able to remove pain, regenerate joints. These are things that, that are just unheard of as recently as a couple years ago. If we're able to make a complete regeneration of a joint rather than placate it with drugs, is that not the better alternative? If you or a loved one have been diagnosed with a bone, joint, ligament, tendon, muscle, or nerve problem, today's information we are sure can change your life. We're going to introduce you today to a new field in healthcare called regenerative medicine. Regenerative means by definition to bring into existence again. Regenerative medicine by definition is a form of molecular biology. It deals with a process of replacing, engineering, or regenerating human cells. If we can regenerate these human cells or these tissues or organs to restore or establish normal function, is that not a better alternative than cutting it out? We think so. In our practice, we use regenerative medicine. We use regenerative medicine products and protocols designed to restore the injured and painful area to as close to normal as possible. With these procedures, you can not only eliminate your pain, but repair rebuild and heal the problem area. Did you catch what I just said? For example, if a lizard loses part of its tail, well, the tail grows back. And that's what we mean by regeneration. The products we use are biologic, meaning they come from a living organism. When a woman has a cesarean delivery, they can volunteer to donate their umbilical cord, placenta, and amniotic fluids that surround the fetus. The donated tissues are carefully screened for any form of disease and become available to be transplanted into another person. They're very, very picky on the process of determination. The donated tissues from a live birth, no abortions are involved. They're not rejected by the person who receives them because the fetal tissue itself contains a molecule that makes them immune privilege. That's not like you have to have the same blood type. This immune privilege allows the recipient to have the cells without any, any type of uh, rejection. When we look at these tissues and cells, 
we look at how they are used, we look at uh, the use depending on the type and severity of the problem that you have. We, are, we see, and understand this, we're, we're talking about stem cells that your body has, but as we have aged, um, we've lost a great majority of those stem cells. Even at the age of 20, we'll see here shortly, that even at the, in the 20s, we have diminished greatly the amount of stem cells available to us. But they are found in bone cells, they're found in fat cells, blood cells, etc. Regenerative me medicine methods are being studied at most major universities, Stanford, uh, Mayo Clinic, Harvard. When we look at Cambridge, um, there's a study right now going on in Cambridge that is just phenomenal. I'm looking forward to seeing the results of by the end of this year coming up. But here's a video from Mayo Clinic. You're looking at a few hundred cells here that are working together. The heart muscle cells that Dr. Tim Nelson views highlight recent advances into regenerative medicine. The simplest way to explain that is it's the opposite of degeneration. Tissues in your heart, joints, and other areas can degenerate or break down with time or disease. Regeneration is the renewal of those tissues, which is something the body does naturally. So one strategy is to try to find ways to improve the healing of your body, and another strategy is to actually supplement or augment the stem cells in your body so that we can improve the healing by transplanting stem cells into it. Dr. Nelson and his colleague Dr. Andre Terzik use stem cells in their research because stem cells are responsible for growing new tissue. So stem cells just means that they're seeds that can grow into many, many tissues. Stem cells can come from a variety of places, embryos, which are not generally used anymore, umbilical cord blood, adult blood, or adult bone marrow. So the type of stem cell will dictate how many different types of tissues can emerge out of it. Scientists can engineer stem cells into the type of cells they want. Here's how it works. Cells called fibroblasts are removed from a patient's skin. They're reprogrammed into what are called pluripotent stem cells. Those cells can be taught to become any type of healthy cells, such as these heart muscle cells. The idea is that the newly engineered healthy cells, when introduced to, say, those of a failing heart, will help restore or regenerate the function of the unhealthy cell. This is one cell that's contracting, is working with many cells, and that gives the whole tissue the contraction pattern like a normal heart. It becomes much more real when you have a, a personal connection to a disease or an illness where we don't currently have good options. And this is where people are asking more and more of the questions, what about stem cells? The answer is researchers, such as these at Mayo Clinic, push forward to make regenerative medicine a reality for patients searching for successful treatment and perhaps cures. For Mayo Clinic News Network, I'm Vivian Williams. Making it a reality is what we're talking about tonight. When we consider that these protocols are available, we have to be able to know how, when, and where and put them together. And that's part of what the medical advisory board we have is all about, giving us the protocols and the transplant uh, product, et cetera, and how much to use, as we know, necessary to determine the science of what we're doing. The medical advisory board, as you see, are learned professionals with multiple years. When we add up the total of all these years, we're in triple digits. Uh, the orthopedic surgeons, the uh, plastic surgeons, we even have available anti-aging, and we've talked about this. I don't know anything about the hair restoration yet, but planning on it anyway. One of the things Dr. Greco is considering, it's very, very probable it's not just possible, it's very probable that the continuation of this as we progress, will we all have Antonio Banderas here? I don't know, but <clears throat> when we look at the anti-aging effects, we know not only are we regenerating joints, but we're increasing the body's ability to uh, regenerate in so many aspects. Podiatric surgeon, orthopedic surgeon, all of these guys have created the protocols that we utilize, how and what we're putting in joints, et cetera. Here in Tulsa, our own uh, medical doctor is Dr. Melita Tate. 
She has been at the American Board of Pediatric Medicine. Uh, her interests include the Board of Internal Medicine and uh, Pediatric Residency. She graduated from the University of Oklahoma. I won't say how many years ago, but here it is. Um, she currently resides with Grassroots Healthcare. It's a very prominent, I think she's so busy she's not accepting patients, so we're thankful to have her on our side. When we look at the focus on stem cells, be, we, we focus on that because the research itself seems to point to these cells being the cause of regeneration of new tissue in a person's body. Dr. Kaplan, you saw earlier, uh, is probably the, the uh, premier researcher that we, he even stemmed, he even uh, came up with the mesenchymal stem cell MSC uh, phrase. But Bernie Siegel, for example, I remember Bernie Siegel uh, back in the 70s, kind of the father of visual imagery. He was one of the people that we saw at first talking about this incredible changes of regenerative medicine. Dr. Kaplan, we, the father of stem cell research, um, he gave them their name. He recently wrote an article regarding renaming these cells to medicinal signaling cells. We know, we cut, we heal. We heal because the body is writing messages to send to the proper department, to send the proper signals to create the cells necessary to regenerate and heal. Healing occurs when the 200 growth factors and controllers of inflammation called cytokines, these are the ones transplanted and also dormant cells signaling to take healing action. So it's kind of like consider the cytokines as writing the blueprint for what's necessary to be done. When we're born, we have millions and millions of these stem cells, and they're attached to our capillaries, hanging out, ready for production or whatever is needed. As we age, the stem cells become dormant or non-functional. After we have reached full bone growth, that's about 22 years of age, which is in our late teens or early 20s, we only have about 10% activity of our stem cells to help us heal. I won't ask how long ago that was for you, sir, but we'll just bypass that and go on. <clears throat> in addition to having less capillaries as we age for the regenerative cells, we've got diminished stem cells in the capillaries where they hang out, the kind of the warehouses where they're waiting to be activated. We're, we have lost capillaries as well. Our bodies are beginning to degenerate rather than regenerate. By transplanting the correct tissue and the correct amount into the injured or painful part of your body, we can activate these dormant cells. We can regenerate new tissue. We can reduce inflammation. We can restore normal function. It's been so long since some of, some of us have experienced what normal function is. You may not remember, but it's when you weren't limping and gimping. I'm sure all of you have tried to solve your problems with medication. When people experience pain, they often use drugs, but this doesn't stop the degeneration. It might stop your recognition of the degeneration, but many times that's not even enough. With painkillers, you become unaware of the injured areas by using them and it can actually make your problem worse. Have any of you experienced that before? I should have bought stock in a leave many years ago. You'll feel better today, but can actually be worse tomorrow. In fact, non-steroidal, anti-inflammatory drugs like Aleve, Advil, etc., may make you feel less pain, but over time they destroy cartilage. I had stage four chondromalacia, which means no cartilage left. And that's probably why. Because as much Aleve, when I played football, I lived in the country and the coach would drain my knee one for the Gipper, but a leave was what I took and did, and so consequently, I think that's probably one of the reasons I had no cartilage left. Opioid drugs such as oxycodone and fentanyl may reduce pain, but they're addictive. Opioid drugs now kill nearly a thousand people each week, 52 weeks in a year. That's more than those killed by auto accidents. 
In 2017, cortisone injections were told to have the following risks. Nerve damage, thinning of skin, temporary flare of pain, joint infection, tendon weakness, blah, blah, blah. Death of nearby bone. But you aren't really told that. How many of you have ever been told that you can only have three cortisone shots in one joint in your entire lifetime? I think I uh, surpassed that the first season of football. When drugs fail, the only alternative up till now has been surgery. All surgeries have complications. Knee, knee replacement? Knee replace, they're amputating your leg. They're taking it, setting it over here, then they're drilling and they're hammering and it's one of the most incredible sounds when they're hammering that, hollowing out the bone to stick that shaft up in there and make it all okay and reattach your leg. According to the National Database of Inpatient Medicare, 4,964 deaths were due to knee replacement reported in one year. If you had blood clots to the lungs, heart attacks, pneumonia related, another 10,000 people died and doesn't include the 17,500 people who were reported to get infections. A knee replacement surgery can cost an average of $57,000. But you don't have to pay that much because the insurance is going to make it all okay. You've only got to pay what? Fifteen, twenty thousand? Makes you think. Today we're going to provide a solution to the degenerative pain related problems. It's a safe, effective, and affordable solution. But before we look at the solutions for you and your loved ones, I'd like you to fill out a survey with me. The, the survey that we have of pain and health problem survey, all of you have been given. And, and because we're recording this today, I'm going to talk to you about that shortly. Uh, but for the sake of this video, we're going to um, push on that it's already been filled out. Uh, the survey's been filled out. We have information that we know We'll be calling you back within work hours, etc. The first question on the pain on the survey asks where you're experiencing pain. So for those of you viewing the video, these would be notes that you would want to jot down. So when you get back in contact with Dr. Chai or myself or Dr. Tate, you'll have the opportunity to have this problems survey, but you might jot down some of this information for yourself. We're going to ask information about the pain, decreased motion, swelling. The last 30 days specifically, the area of the body that's bothering you the most. As we list parts of the body, please make checks to that. All of these would be uh, within the parameters of what we can do to help. Think about the back, the neck, the wrist, the hand, the hip, ankle, etc. Now, please place a check mark, and for those of you viewing the video, you might understand that some of the other problems like gastric distress and these things um, are caused by the drugs many times, so please make note of those as well because those can be changed diligently. Next, fill in what the health problem bothers you the most. Um, the survey question itself, uh, loss of flexibility, etc. Now, how is it affecting you? Unhappy moods. If you're not feeling well, and we talked about this before, the irritability, reduce, reduction of energy, restriction of activities, all this wears and causes stress. Stress causes more inflammation. Inflammation, the cytokines are right and as fast as they can because there's so much stress. We're stuck in that sympathetic nervous system mode that's burning sugar. Sugar, 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 sugar. We're trying to get in the parasympathetic nervous system mode to be the fat burning, which is where we're supposed to be. All of those take their toll in the inflammation process that you're experiencing. All these symptoms point to the fact that you've got a problem that's not been treated successfully. We, we joke at this point, um, if your car had an oil or check engine light on, you could put tape over it. Yeah, like Penny. Um, 
<clears throat> put it over the light and Sheldon would be the one to tell you that something's wrong you need to take a look at. But that'd be like taking a drug for a problem. You don't feel it, but it's still there. You've got two choices with any problem. You could keep doing the same thing. We know the definition of that. Or you could try something new to resolve it because what you've done hasn't worked. If we can show you today a way to get rid of a problem, to get rid of your problems naturally and affordably, raise your hand if it's something you would do. Indeed. Let's look at the solutions to the problems you have. For regeneration to occur, the body needs cells that have the ability to rebuild the injured area. As mentioned earlier, the rebuilders are those growth factors such as fibrinogen, mesenchymal stem cells, etc. All together, they're called the matrix. These rebuilders can be transplanted from rigorously screened tissues donated at the time of cesarean birth. Depending on the diagnosis of the problem, there are different tissues and protocols for what should be transplanted to your injured area. The plant transplanted tissue helps your body with reduction or elimination of the pain, minimizing scar tissue, promoting soft tissue growth, generating new bone, reducing inflammation, all of the things that have cascaded to the point that it's overwhelming in your system. Regenerative medicine procedures can bring your body hundreds of thousands, if not millions of cells to help your body heal naturally. So the choice is to take drugs to reduce symptoms. We've all tried that. Do surgery, if possible, with all its side effects, or receive regenerative medical procedures to stop or reverse the degeneration. These are some of the people that have experienced part of what we do. We haven't personally addressed these, but all of these professional players and professional athletes have experienced PRP. Now, PRP itself, we take from the blood. Uh, we inject it to send the signal to the body to this is the area that we want it to stay in. This is how we want the regeneration to start. In the protocol, we utilize this for stem cells prior to the stem cell injections to do just that and keep that response that we want. There are different treatment options based on what would help you the most and fit in your budget. Let's answer some questions people normally have at our talks. The main question we're asked is what does it cost and does insurance cover it? No, insurance doesn't cover it. <clears throat> doesn't cover it because it's not in the paradigm of their, well, they're there to make money for their stockholders. They do cover you with a policy, but it becomes a barrier helping you. If regenerative medicine is not within your budget, we'll look for another solution you can afford. We have flexible payment options. Nearly everyone can afford our care. Do I need to be tested to be sure the body does not reject the transplanted tissue? As I said earlier, we don't have that problem because they are immune privileged. You can receive these tissues without any matching requirements. All of these and other questions you'll have will be answered after we evaluate your specific problems. Only when we know the extent of your problems and the causes will, be, will we be able to determine if we can help and what would be involved. We would then work together to provide a program that would fit within your budget. I'd like to now end by offering each of you the most precious gift I can. It's the chance to have a longer, happier, and healthier life as illustrated in this video. What will your last 10 years look like? Will you be quick enough for a game of tag with your grandchild? Strong enough to embrace every moment? Will you grow old with vitality? Or get old with disease?
It's time to decide. Is that powerful? Mm -hmm. It's difficult to, to believe that there's that significant of a choice, but that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the cutting edge ability to regenerate, restore, and rebuild. Um, if you will give us an opportunity, we will do an examination, we will make a determination, we'll look at the x-rays, we'll look at the MRIs, uh, we'll get back with you and from that point make a decision how we can best serve you to help that problem. With that I want to uh, encourage you to um, not be like the elderly gentleman, he's standing with his wife in the court system and <clears throat> she's standing before the judge and the judge says, I, I, I see here you, you've stolen a can of peaches. Uh, and she says, yes, Your Honor. And he says, um, how, do I, how do I judge a 80-year-old woman that has stolen a can of peaches? What? Tell you what, how many peaches are in that can? She says, six. The judge says, you know, how about six days for stealing? From the back, her husband screams, she stole a can of peas too. <laughs> so you, you can't park it, you can't pretend it doesn't happen, you can't pretend it, it's not existing, you can't pretend anymore that the aches and pains are going to go away, any more than <sighs> pretending like... Um, uh, this is all going to be solved with currently what you're doing. But you can make a difference. You can make a change. You can make a decision to give your body the opportunity for healing. And that's what we want to do is help ignite that healing inside. We'll discuss the pain and health problem survey and, and go from there. But for our video viewers, we hope this is giving you some information along with what we can provide for you to help you with your healing capacity. Thank you so much.